Welcome to OSBA TV. It is Orangeville Prep taking on the Vaughn Voyagers today. Kelsey Wright Johnson joined by Ryan Greco here. Ryan, game of the week. Are you excited? Oh, I'm so excited right now because not only is this the game of the week in the OSBAs, it's also the first time I've been here in two weeks. And to top it all off, I get to watch one of the top teams in the division in action here against a scrappy young team in Vaughn. So I, I could not ask for a better way to make my return to the OSBAs, and I couldn't even be happier with you. So nice. Vaughn right now is sitting in ninth place. Their record is 2 and 10. Orangeville is tied for first right now with 12 and 1. In Vaughn's last matchup, Ryan, it was February 21st. They took on Father Henry Carr. They lost that one 96 to 91, a super close game. James Canless ended that with 30 points and 12 rebounds. Uh, Wazir had 17.6 rebounds, and it was Cassius Small Martin who ended with 17 and 8. Well, really, that just kind of builds on what we were talking about there, and the the idea of, of Vaughn being that scrappy team that's going to do whatever it takes, whatever it's necessary to try and pull together a win. And this has been a team that's been a part of some very, very close losses. And something that's always impressed me about Vaughn, especially Coach uh, Jimonopoulos's uh, culture that he's kind of set here for Vaughn, has been the idea of. We're never out of any game, and, and these guys have played right to the end of every single game that they've played up until this point, and uh, it'll be impressive to see how they're going to uh, stack up now against Orangeville Prep. Very well said. On the other end, uh, Orangeville's last game was against Lincoln on February 22nd. They won that one, 95-87. Ignis Brezdikas didn't play that game. He was too sick. Keyshawn Saunders ended with 29 points. Uh, the Devil Devil Machine, James Karnick, ended with 12, 22 points and 11 rebounds. Uh, Aaron Ray, 16 points. And Junior Farqua, the Triple Devil Machine, ended just short of a Triple Double with nine assists. Uh, Junior, of course, you know, he was actually the first person in here in the gym that I even personally saw getting some shots up and getting ready for this game. So you, you know for a fact that he's going to be uh, ready to go right now against Vaughn. Here's Ignis Brezdikas in the corner with five seconds left to go on the shot clock. He nails it from beyond the arc. It's a very impressive shot there by Brzdikas, but one that we've uh, come to expect uh, from the big man out of Orangeville. No good on that shot there, though. Latif misses that one, and it's Aaron Ray who picks it up. Keyshawn Saunders now over to Brzdikas. He drives baseline behind the back. It gets Willie Tran on his feet and kicks it out to Aaron Ray. Ray finds Karnick. Karnick goes up. That one just long. Willie Tran rebounds. We're seeing here Vaughn, they're going to need to make the most of their transition because once Orangeville sets their size, and there is William Tran with a nice finish under the rim. Tran now will go to the line. Tran will go to the line for one shot here after getting the bucket to fall. Tran saying, has been injured, Ryan, was, actually was, most of the season, was, which is unfortunate. Of course, and I was going to say, actually, uh, Kelsey, uh, you consider him one of your uh, more favorite players of the OSBA. I do. I just love his hustle and heart. He's also considering the fact, as you said, he's been injured recently. He's had a lot of injuries. He's been kind of nagging him this entire season, but he still remains a huge factor for Vaughn uh, throughout the entire uh, regular season that we've seen so far in the OSBA. Absolutely. I was just saying um, to a couple of the fans earlier before the game that he's not maybe statistically the best player on the team. And I mean, he's not the guy who gets the most rebounds or the most points. But when you watch this game, he's the one really that you leave going, wow, like that kid can ball. Absolutely. And when you add in the fact as well that he's had to play multiple positions throughout the season. I mean, even right now, you saw him setting up in the post there against uh, right, right up against James Karnick and trying to post up against him. And then other days where he's guarding the point guard on the team. He's a guy that can do just about everything, Kelsey. Talk about a guy who can do everything. Aaron Ray playing the four position, chucks it up from beyond the arc there. That one just a bit long. Here's Taylor Douglas. Gets it in to number five, James Canlon. That one's good for two points. I'm impressed with that take to the rim there, the confidence, and to find your teammate right under. Orangeville opting uh, to try and see if he can make that shot early go uh, in the early going uh, before uh, really trying to lock down on defense, it almost seems right now, as far as the bigs are concerned. That one goes out of bounds. It's Vaughn Ball coming back the other way right now. They lead four to three. Here's Canlis up top now. Looks to go middle, passes it off to Small Martin. 
finds the lane on the right-hand side, but dishes out to O'Shane TD, who finds Canlis almost wide open underneath, just can't get it to fall. And one of those shots right there is the reason why the bigs are kind of staying a little bit conservative when it comes to defense. Say, all right, even if you penetrate, let's see if you can finish under the rim. And uh, so far, Vaughn is one for two. A big steal here from Aaron Ray. Farqua gets it out to Ignis Brezdikas. That one just long. And you can see with a pass like that why Farqua is the triple-double king in this league. Yeah, absolutely. A great find there. I don't even think he looked at Brezdikas that time. Willie Tran now on the left-hand side. It's good for two points. Very impressive finish there on the left hand by William Tran. Ignis Brezdikas gets it knocked out of his hands, but he regains possession here. Goes up with his right hand. It's nothing but net. And Brzdikas was looking for the foul on that one, but it looked pretty clean from this standpoint. There's going to be a foul call there on Keyshawn Saunders. Looks like he's calling for the travel there, Ryan, but maybe a little slight push before the travel happened. Keyshawn Saunders will get his first foul of the game. Well, sorry, I was going to say, Kelsey, unfortunately, that was, uh, it was Keyshawn Saunders that initiated the travel in the first place with that physicality. But I can imagine that uh, Coach Johnson uh, uh, doesn't mind that kind of physicality at all on defense. First substitution of the game. Matthew Alexander Moncrief comes on for the Orangeville Prep Bears. And James Karnick takes a quick breather on the bench. I'm sure we'll see him later in the quarter. Well, absolutely. And especially when you have the, the guys that can run through this roster the way that we've seen so far with Orangeville Prep. It's, there's a reason they're 12-1 and one in the league right now. They're trying to keep pace with AI Prep for top standings in the OSBA. And with Bill this Crothers. Game. Yes, and Bill Crothers. Absolutely. Well said, Kelsey. You cannot forget about that team and how talented they are and what they've put together so far this season. Here's Saunders now up top. Gets it over to Moncrief. He hands it off now to Farqua. Three seconds on the shot clock. Farqua chucks it up from the foul line. That one just off to the side there. And it's yeah. Voyager's ball coming back the other way. Here's TD up top. Another steal by Aaron Ray. Give him two on the night, but he steps right out of bounds just a little bit in front of his bench there. It's going to be Voyager's ball on the sideline. Interesting to see that, Kelsey. We had a, a little bit of breakdown in communication on the backcourt here for Orangeville Prep, but they make up for it right away with uh, the steal there. And despite the fact that Aaron Ray was out of bounds, you can see that the defensive intensity for Orangeville Prep is, on, is, is turned right up to 10 so far in this first quarter. Here's TD now up top. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Voyagers. Passes it off to Tran. Tran back to TD. Drives middle, pulls back, a little hesitation. Now he's going right down the middle. Keyshawn Saunders picks up the board. Here's Ignis Brasdikas on the other end with the first jam of the game. And you can see Ignis, this is something he's so good at now at this point where he likes to break out. He likes to get those quick buckets at the other end and always making sure that his point guards see him. Heads are up at all times when he's running down the floor. Cassia Small Martin just loses it there, right into the hands of Ignis Brezdikas, who gets it up to Aaron Ray. Ray over to Keyshawn, and we get another dunk. Make it two for two now of the night, Ryan. And unfortunately, this is a problem that you're going to see as Kwabo Kume brings it up. Uh, Orangeville, they love that transition. They have the athleticism to do it every single time. You've got to try and limit it as much as you can if you're Vaughn. Kwabo Kume drives. Turns around in the paint, that one just long. And unfortunately, Kwabo Kume, the, uh, the height factor there, just a little bit too much as he tried to put it over uh, Moncrief. Yeah, he stands at 5'9". He's actually guarding uh, Matthew Alexander Moncrief there, who's one of the youngest players on the court and one of the tallest. Yes, that's true. That's very true. 2020 class, 6'5". Aaron Ray goes up. Offensive rebound there for him. He'll add that to his stats for the night. Plus, he'll now go to the line for two. Aaron Ray, what, what can we not say about him, Kelsey? The, uh, the improvements and the, the, the ex, uh, expanded role of responsibility that's been put on him this season for Orangeville Prep. Uh, and he has risen to the challenge, hasn't he? He sure has. Committed to Dartmouth earlier this year. A great school for someone who wants to be a neurosurgeon. Uh, last game, like I mentioned earlier, 16 points, 13 rebounds. I mean, uh, that kind of says everything for it. I mean, this is a, a very talented kid both on and off the court. And... Uh, when you have a player like that on your team, you you, you want to try and put those kind of responsibilities on it. But And like I said before, he's, he's rising to the occasion. Absolutely. Just under five minutes left to go in this first quarter. The Orangeville Prep Bears lead right now 11-6 to six over the Vaughn Voyagers. It looks like there might be some kind of uh, issue with the numbers right now on the uh, roster there on the score sheet, Ryan. So the referee is just going to double check, make sure everything is good before we move on to Aaron Ray's foul shots. Ryan, in the first five minutes of this game, what are you liking from Vaughn so far? 
Well, really more than anything, I like the fearlessness under the rim of, of trying to feed the ball on the inside and establish that presence. Unfortunately, you know, as we saw, there was a there was a missed opportunity there. And, and that's something that these guys are, gonna, are just going to have to get over. Orangeville Prep, for what it's worth, this is a team that's very talented. They know they're talented. They're one of the best teams in the league. They're going to they want to see if you're going to be able to make those shots. And in the time that you get where you can make those shots and they're not going to contest it kind of in the way that we saw in those first uh, couple of transactions there, you've got to make those shots. And if you don't, unfortunately, you're going to put yourself in quite the hole. One thing that I'm not necessarily liking about Vaughn right now is their, is their defense on transition. They have to make sure as soon as that shot goes up, unfortunately, there's going to be at least three or four guys that are going to be running back to make sure that they're taking care of the ball and slowing down Orangeville Prep's offense. Because once Orangeville gets going, they can score buckets in a hurry, Kelsey. Especially in their home gym. Absolutely. This is they. These are guys get to come here hours before the before game time and get an opportunity to go and get some shots off, and it's very easy for them to just get something up there. And um, when you've gotten that amount of practice in on a um, on a floor like this, a floor as good as this is, you're gonna make shots every time. It makes a big difference, especially it does, when it does. a lot of schools are playing at home where they don't have that FIBA three pointer. It makes a big difference yes. coming here and having that three-pointer as uh well said as Canlis chucks, up a, <laughs> chucks up a deep three here here's junior farqua now it's a bank but it's good yeah you can almost say it's almost a bit of an unfair advantage but unfortunately you can i mean it's, it's the rules of the league so it is most it teams is are absolutely. moving to that fiba three and they will they will mm -hmm. of course here's aaron way with that deadly euro step it's good for another two points you imagine that could you think for a second there that him and brisdik have been training a little bit based off of that move Aaron Ray's Eurostep has been absolutely lethal so far this year. Here's Canlis now up top for the Voyagers over to Kwao Kume. Back to Willie Tran now. He drives, and there's going to be a foul call there. That one goes to Junior Farqua. And you know what? you got to give uh, Tran full points on that one in full marks because he's initiating the contact. He's trying to get to the rim. He's showing the referees, hey, I'm not afraid to get into the paint and mix it up with these guys and make sure that I'm going to get my shots at the line. Once again, Willie Tran wasn't one of the top three scorers of his team just last game, but he has been dealing with a uh, ankle injury almost the entire season, Ryan. And like I said before, he's one of those guys that maybe not statistically is the best player on this team, but he does everything right. Goes he's for the 50-50 balls. He yep. grabs, he tips rebounds, he tips things in. He's always kind of in the right spot, defends really well. Absolutely. And you know what, to be honest, to build on that very quickly, um, Tran, he also seems to have, at times, the, the biggest hustle. It's very rare that you have both the smartest and most hustle-bound player on in the same body when you have that guy on your team. Big steal here for James Canlis. He goes up on the left-hand side, and that one is good for two. And speaking of hustle, there's James Canlis, though, with a great turnover there in the backcourt, arguably one of the top backcourts in the OSBA right now. Here's Junior Farqua. Hesitation, he goes up for the jumper. That one is no good, but he's going to head now to the charity stripe for two. That foul goes to Ben Kwaokume. Once again, Farquhar showing uh, great resiliency, penetrating almost with relative ease there. Didn't see a pass open, so he decided he's going to go up himself. Defenders all over him, still manages to get the shot off and get the foul. We did mention this earlier in the broadcast, but I was super quiet, so I'm just going to say it again. <laughs> Junior Farqua, who's almost, almost averaging a triple-double so far in this season, was one assist short in his last game against Lincoln Prep. Oh, I mean, once again, what else can't, can't this guy do? And he's, he's quite the athlete if uh, you see some of the pre-warm-ups. 43-inch vertical. Yeah, that's not even, <laughs> that's not human. Here's Farqua that's now. That's Carter levels. <laughs> Prezdikas drives, dishes it back out to Farqua. Gets beyond the three. That one, nothing but net. There's that confidence right there. Farquhar playing on his home floor. You can imagine he's practiced that shot a few times on this floor, Kelsey. Canlis now in the corner. Swings it to Tran. Tran over to Taryn Todd. Finally in the corner for the three-pointer. Like That's it. Adam Hosini. Adam Hosini. Ice in his veins, knocking it down in the corner. No hesitation whatsoever. And I like the fake pass there. That was uh, given up there by uh, Todd. I like the gold shoes. <laughs> Here's Brezdikas out to Shilton. Now in the hands of the PG Farqua up top. The Quebec native turns the corner, kicks it out to Ray. Two seconds on the shot clock. Ray puts up the floater. That one, no good. Willie Tran, another rebound. And that's the best you could hope for right now if you're Vaughn. You want to limit their opportunities, only give them one shot. And once that shot goes up, make dang sure that you're going to bring down the defensive rebound. Willie Tran from beyond the three. It's good. 
And even more important now as we see that three-point swing there, courtesy of William Tran, we've, like we said, he does a little bit of everything for this Vaughn team. Farquaugh setting something up for his team. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Gives it to Brezdikas. He pulls up from beyond the arc, tries to answer it, and that one is good. That's just mean. That's just mean, Kelsey. Kuo Kume up top now. The next possession, those substitutions for both teams coming on. Orangeville has gone into a zone. Canless now over to Todd. Todd going to be called with the traveling violation in for Orangeville is number 13, James Karnick. And for the Vaughn Voyagers, number 11, Cassius Small Martin, and one, uh, O'Shane Taylor Douglas. O'Shane. I'm not actually used to saying his whole name, I just call him TD. <laughs> that is, yeah, actually, that is something you do very consistently. <laughs> OTD? Oh, oh, I like OTD. There you go. Here's Farquaugh behind Ooh. the back. Gets it to Brett Sloan. Now it's in the hands of Aaron Ray. Ray kicks it out to Karnick. Hands it off to Brezdikas. He drives. That one is good, plus the foul. And once again, we're talking about, let's, Kelsey, let's break this down for a quick second here. Unfortunately, folks don't have a replay at home, but when you have a player of Brezdikas' height who's standing at about six foot seven and he's keeping the ball above his head, that means the ball is sitting anywhere between 6'10 and 6'11 when you consider the length of his arms. So when he's consistently putting the ball at 6'10", 6'11", against guards and forwards that are usually standing at about 6'5 in this league, it, it's, it's one of the more difficult shots you could ever block. You almost have to be a 7-footer to get up there and the even try and block that shot. The tough thing with Brezdikas as well is he shoots from both hands. So it's not like he's super left-handed or right-handed and you can kind of guard that one side of him. Like yeah. You've got to be able to guard both because he can, at any time when he drives down the middle there, can put it up with either hand. Yep. And you've got to be big and tall enough to block it and athletic enough to stay with him. I mean, so. is there any thought makers <laughs> coming up? or <laughs> Small Martin. Gets it in to OTD. Now Canless just loses it. Brezdikas picks it up. I like that find. Unfortunately, though, Orangeville prep defense all the way all over it. Farquaugh out to Ray. Ray redrives, kicks it right back out to Farquaugh. A triple drive here. He goes up. You can see his vertical with that kind of jump shot there. Gets right over uh, TD to put it in. And keep, it in, keep in mind, folks, the vertical is not all about just dunking. When you can create those kind of shots by getting up as high as you can, like Farquhar, you're going to create extra opportunities for yourself. Ray gets another rebound there, but passes it right into the hands of TD. Here's Ben Kwakume. Tries to get it in, but Ray, the defender, gets back. You know, it's always that thing. If you make a mistake, you got to be that first defender back. And you can see right there, gets back first, Aaron Ray, and gets his hand into the passing lane to knock it out of bounds. And to build up on that point, Kelsey, as well, even looking at Vaughn, when they were able, once again, recognizing, eliminate the transition game, get back here and intercept that pass. Here's Aaron Ray now on the other end. A finger roll down the middle brings them to 32. Just 15 seconds left to go now in the quarter. Here's O'Shane, TD, up top. That transition game is just killing Vaughn right now, unfortunately. TD off two screens. Drives, dishes out to Canlis from the corner. It's good to end the quarter with 19. Ryan, at the end of the first, it's 32 to 19. The Bears lead the way over the Voyagers. And the, Bo and the Bears have done everything you can ask for right now. When you give them open shots, they're going to knock them down, whether it's the three-point line or whether it's attacking the lane. Uh, if you give them an open pass and transition, they're going to convert every single time. And really, within a blink of an eye, Kelsey, they, were managed, they managed to put up 32 points in 10 minutes. I mean, it's, it doesn't even feel like we just watched 32 two points go through the hoop yet we're looking at it right now on the scoreboard Ryan let's talk a little bit about personnel right now the leading scorer in the last game for Vaughn is James Canless putting up a lot of points so far I mean they have 19 points I'd give him at least nine so far in the day uh, what do you feel about his performance so far I think so far that he's done everything he possibly can do given the situation in front of him he's making movements he's uh, specifically he's making that cut underneath the baseline he's finding himself open there consistently and it just doesn't seem to be a, a place that Orangeville prep seems to be too concerned about right now defensively and if Vaughn can exploit that then they're going to have themselves a much better go around in the second quarter 
Let's take a look at Orangeville Prep. Now, they had no Ignis Prezdikas in their last game. Still pulled it out over Lincoln, 95-87, to 87, but he's back today. Tell me about his performance so far in the so first quarter. So far, he's doing what we expect from Ignis Prezdikas. He's done everything. He's ran down the transition. He's gotten easy layups and easy dunks. He's hit knockdown three-pointers when his team needs him to uh, almost quell the uh, momentum of their opponents. And, of course, he's shown that floater, that floater that he's so good at in switching hands and finishing in the rim. Uh, really, it just seems like a patented Ignis Prezdikas performance here right now. All right, guys, to start off the second quarter, it is Voyager's ball. Here's TD bringing it up for the visiting team. He comes off two screens. Gets it now over to Small Martin. Just loses it there on his dribble, but able to get it out to TD, who drives. Can't connect. James Karnick comes down with the board. That was a good block by Aaron Ray, staying with him the entire way. Keyshawn Saunders pulls up for the long two. That one no good. Small Martin grabs the board. Well, Vaughn's got to take advantage of this now. This is their opportunity. Willie Tran, a pump fake, able to get an offensive rebound there. Puts it right back up, but Karnick with the monster rebound. Ignis Bresdika is going to be called with the charging foul there. And that's there. what you got to do. Get back on defense, set yourself up before he gets a full head of steam or else that's going to be a bucket or a foul. Vaughn Ball now on the baseline. You said it right, Ryan. Great defense there by this blue team. They're going to come back the other way now with 24 seconds on the shot clock. And that's one thing. Gus Jiminopoulos, head coach of the Vaughn uh, Voyagers, he, he's a smart guy. He's able to make those in-game adjustments, let his players know what they're doing against us that's so effective. And you know what? It's on the players as well, though, to be receptive to that uh, instruction. And you see it right there played out. Canless drives left, dishes it out to Small Martin. Martin looking to turn the corner, gets it out to Willie Tran. Tran just off the mark. Tough shot there for Tran with a hand right in his face. Nonetheless, a big man, too. I was going to say, one of the biggest <laughs> hands out there right? uh, in Karnick. 6'10 hand. <laughs> Here's Saunders now. Gets it to Ray. Ray gets it stolen from him, but it goes right into the hands of Karnick, who gets it back to Ray, out to Saunders. An extra pass out to Ignis Bresdikas, and it's good for three points as he falls to the floor. The uh, benefits of having very long arms, Kelsey. Great ball movement there for uh, the home team here. I think everyone uh, touched that on that possession. Yep. Here it is now in the hands of TD up top. Over to Canlis. Canlis back up to TD. He spots up, hand down, man down, but it's just short with four seconds on the shot clock. It's going to whack Orangeville way. Unfortunately, I don't think uh, TD is uh, used to taking a shot from that distance, and uh, you can almost kind of tell right away is the the way he released it. He had great rotation on the ball, but as soon as it went up, you're, uh, it was, you could see right away that it was going to be short. All right, guys, there's a timeout called on the floor. Eight minutes, 22 seconds left to go in the second quarter. It is 35 to 19. Orangeville is leading the way. We'll be right back. Welcome back now to OSBA TV. Eight minutes, 22 seconds left to go in the second quarter. 35 to 19, the Bears lead the way over the Voyagers. Here's Matthew Alexander Moncrief into James Karnick for the third jam of the night. Chelsea, when you have that kind of athleticism, you can make those kind of passes because you can throw it up there with guys to get it. A big steal here for Moncrief. And another dunk for James Karnick. No, just the layup, but it's worth the same. Two points now for Orangeville. Karnick, I'm actually impressed with the way that he took the ball there. He took the contact. Almost looks like he got hit in the head there and still managed to keep his composure and finish at the rim. Very impressive finish, Kelsey. That guy takes some beatings when he's out there playing. He will end almost every game with a bloody nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We have actually seen that enough times. One of the biggest guys in the league, actually. I mean, he gets pounded on, but... He takes it like a champ. He's one of the strongest guys as well as he goes up there. Just can't get it. An offensive rebound by Aaron Ray. He's going to be called with a traveling violation after being jumped 
blocked and then uh, coming back down seven minutes, 29 on the clock. And once again, full kudos goes to the Vaughn Voyagers. They're not giving up on the possession or the play. They decided that, no, we're going to make sure that if he's going to get that shot up, he's going to be contested to every single chance that they get. Very impressive defense there by Vaughn. Here's Taryn Todd up top, over to Tran. Tran dishes out to Canlis. He checks his feet to make sure he's beyond that three-pointer, and that one is good. What kind of composure does that take, though, Kelsey, to, to have to check your feet at the last second, especially when you have that many athletic defenders that could be flying at you and still have the conscience to knock that shot down? How impressive. It was a great shot there by the Vaughn Voyager. Ignis Bresdikas is going to get that foul called for him. That one will go to James Canlis. I like that foul by Canlis. you got to make sure that the best players on the other team are uncomfortable when they receive the ball, and Canlis did that to the full extent. Obviously, you don't want him to foul out as he's one of your bigger uh, pieces of your team, but to set that tone and say, hey, we got to make sure that these guys don't get any free shots, that's a big move. Ale or Matthew Alexander Moncrief puts it up. And it's just tipped in there by the Orangeville Prep. 41 now they have on the night. So many white long arms there finishing it in white jerseys. A nice backdoor cut there by Cassius Small Martin. Just couldn't connect on the pass from Canlis, but a beautiful read. And unfortunately, that's what Vaughn is going to have to do. Those passes, those moves are going to have to be perfect every single time if they're going to want to get themselves back in this game. Here's Farquaad now up top, just under six and a half left to go in the second. Finds Karnick down low. Karnick going against Willie Tran. A beautiful drop step, then kicks it out to Junior Farquaad for the Euro and the finger roll in. What a left handed, too. Two steps and a left handed finish. I mean, what, what else can you really do against that as a defender? It's, it's almost impossible to stop if you don't have a big man there to stop it as well. Tran launches from up top. It's just off the mark, but the offensive rebound now goes to Vaughn. Another backdoor cut. This one to Taryn Todd, and this time able to fin finish. Once again, they got to continue to with that fearlessness. Attack the rim every chance you get, and things like that as well. When you recognize it, if you see that the team is starting to kind of hold off a little bit because they feel like they've got a big enough lead already, you've got to be able to capitalize and finish every single time. Good defense there by Taryn Todd. You know, must have got a little pumped with that finger roll. Gets back on defense. A great stop there. It's 21 seconds now on the shot clock. Orangeville. And that's something we've seen both times here. Canlis was it the first time with Brzdikas and now with uh, TD. Keyshawn Saunders takes the contact on the landing. Sinks it. Absolutely nothing but net for that three ball. Here's Small Martin now. Looking for the answer. That one no good. You can see the rebounding prowess here on Junior Farquhar. He goes coast to coast. Kicks it out to Ignis Bresdikas with another answer. Both teams putting on a three-point comp or three-point competition here. Just a clinic on both sides. Junior Farqua going to be called with the foul. This is impressive, Kelsey. This is just impressive what we're seeing right now. 50 points, and we still have five minutes to go in the second quarter. I don't think I've seen an offensive output like this at the high school level, at least so far in a game. I don't. I actually don't think I have. Have you seen 50 points with five minutes to go in the second quarter? Mm, maybe with the professionals, maybe not in this league. Yeah, I, I actually have not. These, I don't think these guys have missed from the three-point line. It's they've been that impressive so far, and and it's n f no lack of effort from Vaughn's defense. These guys are just hitting big shots right now. They're coming out with some urgency, and that is 100% sure. Um, they're right now tied for the first place spot. They're coming out hungry. They want that first place spot, and you can tell with the way they're playing This tonight. is a statement game at this point by what it looks like so far. I mean, we still have a whole half to play, but... James Karnick saves it, but no one there to pick yeah. it back up. Julian Lepp subbed into the game for the Orangeville prep. Just under five minutes left to go in the game. In the half. In the first half. Yeah. It is not the end of the game. <laughs> Lots more action yet to come. Here's Latif over to Small Martin. He drives dishes to Willie Tran. Tran, a beautiful reverse layup there. Great read. Uh, and that's it. you got to read your defense. James Karnick is not going to get himself in foul trouble unnecessarily, so you need to make sure that you're the one that's the aggressor going up and finishing under the rim. Great finish by Tran. Here's Lep now. Out to Shilton. Now it's in the hands of Prezdikas. 
He pulls up. Great defense there by Small Martin. No, that was that was a clean block right there as Brzezikas tried to lean in but couldn't finish. Now it's Latif from the corner. That one is good. The Voyagers practiced that shot from that corner for about five minutes in warm-up, and you can yes, tell with that shot. No, that's a great that's a great point, Kelsey. They, these guys, they, they love shooting from the from that corner. You even see Canlis earlier checking his feet in the corner before hitting that shot. That's a spot that they're extremely comfortable with in the game. Ignis Brasdikas blocked, but cleaned up by his teammate Keyshawn Saunders, who's there down low, bringing them to 51 with three minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the first half. That's just tenacity right there, Kelsey. Guys get blocked, they know they get the risk. Oh, what a finish. Great cut by Cassius Small Martin. Even better uh, pass there. A great dime by James Canless. And you got to give Vaughn full credit here. They're down uh, 18 at this point, but they haven't shown any signs of stopping their offense. A lot of basketball still yet to play. Here's Lep from beyond the three. That one is good. Give him his first three points of the night. I want to see if these guys can hit 70 before the end of the half. Don't dare them. Here's Darren Todd. Ooh, a nice, nice little move. spin move. Gets it out to Small Martin. Pump fake and a floater from the baseline just off the mark. James Karnick able to save that one in. Once again, the long arms have a factor. That's a, that's a loose ball that most players can't get. Keyshawn Saunders now out to Brezdikas. He chucks it up once again from beyond the arc. There you go, Ryan. A first rare miss for this Orangeville team, but it does go out of bounds on the Voyagers. It's going to be Orangeville ball coming in. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Substitutions for both teams now. Brett Sloan and Aaron Ray make their way onto the floor for the Orangeville with A's. And it's O'Shane, Taylor Douglas, and Ben Kwaukume for Vaughn Voyagers. And it's funny, that, that missed shot there by Ignis Brezdikas, he still had a tippy toe on the line. And his foot was kind of almost like up, almost like a one-footed three-pointer. <laughs> ben Kwakume showing that hustle and heart there, gets back quick and puts another two points up well, for the Voyagers. Ben Kwakume, I think, I, I, I will say arguably is the fastest point guard in this league. He is lightning on Let's the Let's make him in junior race after the game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love to see that. Him, get, get Anton Vernon, get Stephen Smith, get all those guys, get Jordan Henry. Should I'd we? love to see that. I'd love to see that <laughs> sprint on a track meet. Two minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the first half. It's 54 to 35. Timeout called. We'll be right back. Welcome back to OSVA TV. Two minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the first half. Orangeville leads over Vaughn, 54 to 35, to end the second quarter here. Here's Canless over to Todd. Todd, a beautiful pass, penetrating the zone there, and it's kicked out to Canless. He chucks one up. Aaron Ray grabs another board. See, oh, they want to steal there. Taryn Todd grabs the steal, gets the bucket. <laughs> That's it. Got to make the most of every opportunity you get, and Taryn Todd did that just now. Here's Saunders bringing it up now for Orangeville, playing the one. I love seeing him play the one when he has the chance. I mean, I like him in the two, but you can really see his versatility when he gets to play both. Here's Lep now, back over to Saunders. Five seconds on the shot clock. They find Shilton now out to Lep. Lep spots up from beyond the three. That one, no good. He's now one for two of the night. Kwakume comes down with that board. It's a great defensive set there by Vaughn. We'll see if they can convert now. Kwakume slings it up. That one no good. Another rebound for Aaron Ray. Julian Lepp, great job closing out the shooter there. And uh, Kwakume had no space to maneuver, thus the air ball. Ray up top. 
He drives, dishes to Lep. Lep gets a pass in there to Aaron Ray. Ray goes up and under. He's called for the charge, Ryan. And that was uh, Kwawakume making sure at the last minute, setting his feet, and he was managed to just keep himself just vertical enough that he could sell that call. Very, very savvy move uh, by the young player out of Von Prep. One minute, six seconds left to go in the first half. It is Von Voyager's ball on the sideline. Ben Kwakume will bring it up for the visiting team. Kwakume is uh, one of my personal favorite players, being the size that he is, but just so impressive with his decision-making. We all have favorites. Yep, <laughs> decision-making ability. And he can knock down a few shots when he needs to. Todd just long on that one. Aaron Ray gets another rebound. I'm excited to see his stat line actually at the end of this night. Here's Keyshawn Saunders. Out to Lep. Lep saves it. Back over to Ray. He drives middle now, goes up, and he will get the foul call on that one. Going to go to the charity stripe now for two with 41.7 on the clock. Ray showing off that left hand, uh, establishing the uh, that move to the basket there. Nothing more, uh, nothing more impressive when uh, you can see a player make that kind of move to the basket. Vaughn, of course, doing what they need to do, though, making sure they're staying in front and making sure there's not going to be any easy buckets. But as a result, Aaron Ray, one of the better uh, free throw shooters of Orangeville Prep, knocks down the first and the second. 41.7 now in this first half. Here's Canlis. Swings it all the way over to Todd. He drives, gets it back out to Kwakume. Great, Great defense there by the top two of this zone for Orangeville. But Taryn Todd from deep, able to put it up, and TD gets his own rebound. Finds Kwakume up Good top pass. with 20 left. And Keyshawn Saunders brings that one down now. Only 15 seconds left to go in the first half. It's knocked out of bounds there by Vaughn. Going to stay with Orangeville. And unfortunately, Kelsey, uh, when you live by the three, you're going to die by it as well. And when, you know, I'm seeing some very impressive passes from Vaughn's offense right now, getting guys open. But if the guys are open and they can't knock down those shots, unfortunately, at the end of the day, we are still at the high school level. You're not going to expect to see a team shoot 60% from the three-point line. And uh, really, that's not a strategy that Vaughn can continue to hope to do and still come away with the victory here. They, they have to make sure that they're finding ways to create more easier baskets for themselves and easier opportunities. Because when you're shooting from out there consistently, you're, uh, unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. You're not going to make as many shots as you'd want to. Ryan, 14.1 on the clock. A timeout called by the Vaughn Voyagers. What do you think their defensive strategy is heading into this last 14? Uh, just clog the paint. Make sure that uh, if the shot goes up, you, you got to try and find a way to either box guys out and come down with the rebounds. Uh, you, you don't want to be caught ball watching. That's, that's, a, that's a term that I've used many a times on this broadcast and also in other uh, broadcasts in the NBL is that guys get caught ball watching sometimes when the ball goes up. And that's something that you, above all else, cannot do against a team that's averaging about six foot seven in height, especially especially when you've got guards that have that kind of length that can attack the paint like that. You have to make sure that you're grabbing a guy, boxing him out. It doesn't even matter if you get the rebound or not. It's about just making sure that that guy doesn't get the rebound. And when that ball hits the floor, you, you're going to have a better chance of getting the ball than they will because you've guessed it. You guessed it. We used to have out. a drill in university when I was playing for uh, Coach Charles Kissy right now who coaches at Brock, and it would be a box-out drill. We'd have to box out the offensive players, and no one was allowed to touch it until it bounced on the floor. The hardest thing ever, but such a good kind of lesson, exactly what you're talking about here. It's all about just boxing out. Nobody actually has to jump up and grab that rebound as long as the other team doesn't grab it. That's a great one. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> there I, you go. No, I'm going to use that one, definitely. <laughs> as we can see, there was a, a, a foul there that went against Orangeville Prep. As an illegal screen there on Brett Sloan, and it's going to go Voyager's ball with 6.4 now on the clock. The last thing Orangeville would want right now is a three ball as Keyshawn Saunders steals it. Two seconds now on the clock. He puts it up. The finger roll is good for two points. Keyshawn Saunders at least will not get yelled at heading into this second half. A great <laughs> finish there by the... Uh, the Brampton native at the end of the first half. It's 58 to 37 for Orangeville Prep. Yeah, and that was nothing short of an impressive move there, especially stripping one of the better ball handlers on the floor right now, and then just absolutely blowing by his defender to finish at the rim. And that really just kind of sums up this first half for Orangeville Prep. All right, guys, you got 10 minutes. Go grab a drink, go grab a snack. We'll be back for second half action. <laughs> 